Hi, everyone. Uh, we're back with the discussion about the 10 year war uh, by Jonathan Kong. And today's discussion is about part three of the book, which is the final part. Uh, this part kind of talks about um, post ACA stuff. Um, and um, it goes on to talk about repeal of ACA replace of ACA um, and gives us like a little bit of what we can do moving forward. So that's where we are going to focus today. Um, again, my name is Nikita and I have with me Laura and we'll be starting the discussion. You can take it ahead, Laura. Cool, yeah. So yeah, like Nikita said, this section was really all about the various ways um, that Republicans both in the Obama administration and the Trump administration tried to repeal the debate as to whether they tried to replace it uh, is perhaps ongoing. <laughs> um, but yeah, mainly uh, repeal it. And we just wanted to note that um, obviously throughout the book, but especially in this chapter, there's sort of been like a democratic slant, maybe a little bias um, in favor of democratic policies and procedures and things like that. Um, but I don't think that our author, Jonathan here, was trying to be divisive or um, overly critical in that way. I think he was more just trying to point out the sort of political pitfalls within our, our legislation making process um, in America. So just wanted to quickly acknowledge that. But yeah, so the first major attempt um, was the disagreement whether over the individual mandate was legal or not. Um, the defenders said that it was necessary and proper in order to regulate insurance prices, which would fall under congressional power, but the critics disagreed um, and said that the ACA was compelling people to engage in commerce um, rather than just making rules for commerce already in place, which was not constitutional. Um, ultimately, the Supreme Court ruled to uphold the law. Um, and then pretty much from 2010 to 2020, 2018-ish, we saw several um, uh, strategies from the Republican caucus um, to repeal and replace. Um, during Starting in 2010, um, Jonathan Kwan said that Republicans became more ideologically and temperamentally extreme after gaining more seats in the election, um, hostility towards Obama and Obamacare, um, which sort of resulted in this lack of political peace. And during the presidency, Obama was able to obviously veto most of those bill attempts put forth by Paul Ryan or whoever. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, wasn't Obamacare, the, like the term coined by Republicans? Um, I think it was because a part of the book, um, it said that, Eventually, even Obama himself started referring to it as Obamacare rather than the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think like it started through the Republicans, but he kind of rode with it. Um, like to place, I feel like that most of the Republican strategies um, rounded on this fact that had like rounded on this uh, rhetoric about like anti-Obama rhetoric. Um, rather than the pitfalls of the policy itself, just because it was like, it was not solely Obama's effort. Like a lot of people put in a lot of effort in making uh, the bill a law, but I feel uh, somehow Republicans kind of centered that around Obama and carried that kind of negative rhetoric um, around it to the whole like kind of prepping for the repeal um, and replace um, of the ACA. Yeah, I think he really hits hard that like healthcare is not on the Republican policy agenda. It's just not there. Not enough people in the caucus care enough about it to yeah. focus on it and to like, and to hire, you know, political aides and advisors and analysts who can help a policy that is sound. So, I mean, really the Republican focus is to downsize or eliminate programs, taxes and national security, opposing Medicaid expansion, 
cutting spending and reducing deficits. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, basically and, their um, own party based on democratic opposition. I mean, uh, I would say that uh, if you're repealing something, right, you have to replace it with something. So this whole part of the book, which kind of talks about Paul Ryan and like um, his um, whole agenda to repeal, like he was heading that at one point and um, what are we replacing it with is the answer to that was nothing. We will work it out in two years after the uh after this like bill has passed and we'll figure out then what we are going to replace it with that was like i think that got opposition from even republicans itself like a lot of republicans yeah. were like well you cannot do that because you need to give us something like what are you replacing it with and not to forget about so many million people who will lose their insurance like that has been spoken again and again in the book like the Congressional Budget Office kind of uh, making these predictions about how many people will lose insurance if you repeal ACA. Yeah, um, 23 million. Yeah. I think their estimate. And uh, that thankfully did not go through. Uh, it, it did not go through. That was great. Uh, but there I saw like some, like some kind of, uh, I would not say bipartisan, but some kind of agreement towards, well, this cannot work out because you're not giving me something to replace it with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even like pre like Republicans that previously in the book were named as like being the most conservative, like Lindsey Graham or Orrin Hatch or John McCain were like, no. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And that's why that they was... couldn't, that's ultimately why they couldn't get the votes is because they didn't lay the intellectual groundwork. It was too centralized. It was too private. It didn't go through the necessary review process. There was no formal assessment of it. And Trump just never talked policy. He left it all on Paul Ryan. So there was no communication between the two congressional houses on how they were gonna present the bill. Yep, uh, pretty much that, pretty much that. Hot mess. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like most of the book, most part of the book kind of talks about the different options that they came up with. So I think like um, one of the bill was from Paul Ryan, then Mitch McConnell had one bill, mm -hmm. which did not go through. Then there was one bill from Bill Cassidy and Lindsey Graham, which again did not go through. Um, how like and this all was like, finally, what came through was like taking off individual mandate. That was one that like got through, um, but yeah, there were several attempts to kind of completely dismantle ACA. Yeah. And like, this was happening with us, like in real time, like we were like, okay, the news kind of, I want to like what's gonna happen because like that kind of rushed back to me like all of this kind of happened in real time with me because I came to the US in 2015 so I kind of get to see this all of this happen in real time like post 2015 what was mentioned in the book so it was like oh yeah I remember that so yeah I think oh, uh, a lot of us that are in like the college age, even a couple years ago, might not have been old enough to realize the seriousness of, of the potential reveal. Because I mean, at the time I was still like, you know, on my parents' insurance and my undergrad, that type of thing. So, but reading back now, I'm like, oh my God, like <laughs> these people were probably terrified of, of losing their insurance. So it's kind of crazy that this was just a few years ago. Yeah, and like my my issue with the whole idea was that um, there was no intellectual discussion leading this repeal. It was just out of spite, I felt, that they wanted to get rid of the SEA. They did not give anything that kind of um, would be beneficial to the people who 
don't have insurance or who who still don't have insurance even with the ACA so there was nothing that was gonna uh, better the situation that was like my issue with the whole process um, but it was a great book to kind of read and like um, I felt like when I when I thought about this book I felt like it was going to be dry to read like a lot of policy, a lot of politics, and it was not going to be, but it was so engaging and like yes. a page turner, like what happens next? What happens next? <laughs> um, even though we know like an outline of what's going to happen, like uh, it was still, there were still some parts that I did not know, like the corn uh, husker kickback and all of that. Um, Stuff which happened in part two so that was that was cool yeah I agree I learned so much especially about the political negotiation process and just how much it takes to get a bill passed I did not realize that prior to reading this book so um if you haven't read it yet and you're thinking about reading it it's definitely worth it yeah I mean y'all are going to enjoy it a lot going to cruise through that book really quickly super easy to read super easy language um and as we mentioned there are some like caveats to it like how laura mentioned it is some kind of democratic leaning but it's not divisive um and yeah i mean jonathan Kahn does mention failures of the ac as well that's when i was like okay great that we are also talking about failures of aca uh which was which was good because we kind of want to have that balanced perspective on things that, oh yes, um, we did kind of fail in some aspects like the healthcare.gov thing. Um, but overall it leaves us with some points that we can think about like um, in terms of like policy making, like what are the barriers to kind of get a bill passed into a law and all of that. That's where he ends like the book with like, what can we leave and what can we start thinking about like paths to universal coverage? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Even though the ACA, like you pointed out, is highly flawed, highly imperfect. Like it saved millions of people from losing their insurance and probably thousands of lives as well. And definitely laid the groundwork moving forward to move hopefully toward universal healthcare and not in the opposite direction. All right, I think uh, we can close the discussion right now. We really hope that you still, even after we have finished the discussions, you pick this book up and read it and uh, we'll be posting on Goodreads today. So I hope you, everyone engages in that um, discussion and uh, thank you for uh, being with us for all of these discussions and reading the book. Bye.